Welcome to today's notes over special solutions to inequality. So the solutions we're going to look at today are ones that include infinitely many solutions or no solution. So infinitely many solutions, you can write your answer like this. All real numbers, you can put an infinity symbol, you can also write the words infinitely many solutions. So you'll get an answer like this when you end with a statement that is true. So let me show you what that means. So let's look at number one. So if I solve this inequality, and I'm gonna draw a line down my inequality symbol, kind of like I do with my equal signs, and you don't have to do that. It just helps when you keep your inequality symbols or your equal signs lined up. So I'm gonna solve this by subtracting x from both sides. I'm gonna move my variable to one side, and then what happens? I actually get rid of my variable on both sides, and I end with a statement that looks like this. Negative five is greater than or equal to negative five. Is that a true statement? It is. This is a true statement. So when you get rid of your variables and you end with a statement that is true, your answer is all real numbers. So how would you graph that on your number line? It would look like this. You would graph everything. Now I want to note something. If I have, if I end with something that maybe looks like this, negative five is greater than negative five, is that a true statement? No, it's not. In that case, your answer would be no solution, and we'll look at that in a minute. So let's go on to number two. So this is an example of a compound inequality where you would get infinitely many solutions. So let's solve each simple inequality. In this first one, I'm gonna get the variable all by itself by dividing by three. So I get x is less than three. So if I were to graph that, I would put an open dot at three and I would shade to the left. That's x, that is where x is less than three. So now let's solve the other simple inequality. Remember my goal is to get x all by itself. So I'm gonna undo this addition first by subtracting two. And then I get four x is greater than or equal to 12. And then at this point, I'm gonna divide both sides by four and I get x is greater than or equal to three. So x can be anything less than three or x can be anything greater than or equal to three. So if I were to graph this one also on this same number line, I would shade in this point and I would shade to the right. And here's another example where you have all real numbers as your solution. So these are two examples where your answer would be infinitely many solutions. Let's move on to examples where your answer would be no solution. I'm going to change colors here. So you'll get an answer like no solution. You can write that. That means no solution. It also means empty set. There's nothing in the set. Okay, empty set, no solution. You can write any of those. You'll get this as your answer when you end with a statement that's false. So let's look at this as an example. Okay, my goal is to get x all by itself. So I need to move my variables to one side. And what happens? I get rid of my variables and I end with negative five is greater than three. Is that true? No, negative five is not greater than three. This is not a true statement. Therefore, your answer is no solution. Oh God, that's terrible. Okay, it looks like this, no solution. And how would you graph it? You would leave it blank. It's just completely blank. So let's move on to our last example. And this is a compound inequality. This is one of those and inequalities. And it's like I have two simple inequalities in one strip like this. I need x to satisfy both inequalities. Okay, so my goal is to get x all by itself, so in the middle. How do I do that? I subtract two. And I'm gonna subtract two from negative seven. I'm also gonna subtract it from negative one. And I like to draw my lines down those inequality symbols because that shows you I'm basically solving two simple inequalities at the same time. So what happens is I get x all by itself in the middle. My inequality symbols stay pointing in the same direction. Negative seven minus two is negative nine. 
and negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So now let's graph it. And I'm actually going to rewrite this one right here. x is greater than negative 3, and x is, and I'm going to rewrite this one like this, less than negative 9. When I rewrite it with my variable on the left of my inequality, that helps a lot of students while graphing. Now remember, when you are graphing an and inequality, your solution graphically is where these lines overlap. Okay, That's that and part of your inequality. That's where your solutions satisfy both inequalities. So you need some over overlap when you graph this. So if we graph x is greater than negative 3, that's right here. There's greater than. x is less than negative 9, that's right there. Notice in this example, I don't have any overlap. This is an and inequality, and I need overlap to have a solution. And because I don't, my answer is no solution. And that concludes your notes over special solutions to inequalities.